Welcome to the iRacing Today radio show for today, November, I almost said October, I don't know why, November the 28th, 2014, I'm your host Trevor, and this is the, uh, I will welcome you to the Chad Dalton edition of the iRacing Today radio show. Thank you for noticing that. (laughs) It is the 77th edition, which is of course the number that Chad drives, so, uh, and uh, yeah, 77, wow. We've been doing this I for a long proud of you. time. <laughs> Man, you're like my new best friend. <laughs> for November the 28th, of course, as I mentioned before, uh, it's a nice Friday evening. It's a, you know, it's a holiday weekend, so we're recording a little bit later than normal because, well, you know, Chad was busy stuffing his face full of turkey. At least I assume it was turkey, but or some sort of family-related get-together food into face sort of thing. It's a lot of food. I see. Of course, as previously mentioned, I'm Trevor. This is the iRacing Today radio show. That's Chad. He's already talking, like, at a turn. But, you know, he was all happy and stuff, so I'll, I'll let it go. <laughs> uh, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in, of course. And we hope that everybody's having a um, a great holiday weekend. I mean, it's uh, it, for those international listeners, which seem to be everybody, uh, uh, it is the Thanksgiving holiday in the United States, so everybody's off on, um, well, they're off work so they can go shopping and stuff is how I understand it, and then occasionally eat turkey. So, happy Thanksgiving to all our American fans. There's got to be at least a dozen of you, I guess. I mean, that aren't in the UK and Australia. I'm a fan. (laughs) I love the show, man. It's great. First time caller, uh, long time listener, first time caller. Hi, Mom. (laughs) Uh, but thanks for uh, whether or not you're having a holiday or not. We appreciate you, tu- you tuning in and listening to us and uh, enjoying the show. Well, at least I'm assuming that you're going to enjoy the show. I'm just taking a leap of faith there. Uh, but on this week's show, we will have some news, which is basically the iRacing promotion segment. Uh, being holiday time, they've got some good promotions going on, and we're going to go over those. And we've got a bit of a different segment for you guys this week. Um, we'll talk about our little bit of racing experience. I mean, there was, there was not much. I was on the track last night, and I'll explain that briefly when we get to that part. And we're going to do something a bit different. We had a, um, a suggestion from a listener. Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Tyler Young uh, gave us a suggestion for something to discuss on the show. There was a uh, topic that kind of blew up a little bit on the forums there, so... Uh, he thought it would be a good idea for us to discuss it on the show, and I thought that was a great idea. And then I thought, you know what? Since it's a two-sided argument type thing, we were going to do it in debate format. So uh, when we get to that, I'll explain it. But uh, basically, Chad's going to take one side, I'm going to take the other, and we're going to kind of prove our point on the uh, on that side of the argument. Um, so that will be... Uh, that will be our main segment. A little bit, something a little bit different. And if uh, you guys like the format, then maybe you guys might have some suggestions of things that you would like for us to bait in the future. And uh, to be clear, when we uh, decided who we were, how we were going to debate this, I said, "Chad, you pick what you want. I just like talking. I'll just argue whatever it is you don't do because I can talk about yeah. nothing. I can talk about anything." <laughs> yeah, uh, it made my job easier. Well, it did it because you're all like, "Well, I still don't know which one I want." But anyway. <laughs> I'm sort of on the fence. Uh, but our In the New segment, otherwise known as the, hey, here's some ways to win stuff or save money on iRacing uh, during the uh, next couple of months here or less, depending on which promotion we're talking about, segment of the show, which I guess is still presented by iRacerStuff.com because there's still a website dedicated it. They're dedicated to the iRace and Motorsport Simulation. They post things that they find <laughs> interesting. Ever- once done this right. I have done, yes. Or that may be useful to the IRS and community. Check them out today at irisstuff.com. Dedicate it. Ha. The iRacing Black Friday special is back. 
I believe we've mentioned uh, this several times on the show when we're talking about renewals and stuff like that and saying, hey, you know what? You know it's coming because it always does. And uh, guess what it did? Uh, from now through December the 4th, so not much time left here, like uh, less than a week. Uh, it's about a week, isn't it? I don't know. When's December 4th fall? It falls next Thursday, less than a week. Uh, iRacing has cut the price of a one-year renewal membership in half. That's right. You can renew your membership for just $49. You can use this code up to five times. Keeping in mind, each time will be $49. You don't use the code once and just in it. Yeah, so use the promo code PR-49RENEW, which spells renew 2014, to take advantage of this offer. Valid on existing active accounts only. Don't forget that when you renew early, the extra year membership gets added to your existing membership. Basically meaning, hey, you're not all of a sudden saying, well, I just renewed there a couple months ago, and I know if I do a year now, does that mean that I'm only up good for a year from now? No, that would be stupid <laughs> and a horrible business practice. No, you're basically tacking on a year uh, from whenever your current expiry date is. You tack that on to the end. So, for example, if you were set to expire on January the 31st, 2015, you use this promotion, you will now expire on January the 31st, 2016. To take advantage of this special renewal offer, simply log in at the members.iracing.com site and click View Cart at the top of the page, then enter the promotion code from above and click Apply. Finally, complete the checkout process, because you still have to give them money, because that's how transactions work. So, and uh, for our UK and Australian listeners, Black Friday is what they call the day after Thanksgiving, where everybody goes... Stupid with sales, and they run each over there over in parking lots to get to the sales. And the sales aren't that good this year, at least from up here, because we do the same thing up in Canada, except for even though we don't have Thanksgiving, we just say, you know what, let's put a bunch of stuff on sale because Black Friday sounds cool and people love it, so let's do it. And it really wasn't that great. Steam is about the best thing that I've had where a couple of games have been on sale that I want it, but that's about it. I mean, you know, hey, Xbox One with a good deal or for. 50 bucks off, PlayStation 4, 50 bucks off. It's like, okay, if I was in the market for one, sure. Not really a deep cut. Although I think Andy got a, uh, our teammate Andy, he got a washing machine, so I guess he's probably happy because he saved some good money there. So yeah. if you have any dirty clothes, head on over to Andy's place. He can help you out. <laughs> Hopefully he's got a dryer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it's a bit cold now, and so it probably won't uh, air dry very well in the backyard, I don't think so. Probably not. <laughs> Probably end up frozen. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, speaking of that promotion, though, uh, I did take advantage of this. Only did one year. Because, um, I'll be honest, I don't really know what I'm doing tomorrow. Really don't know what I'm doing five years from now. So, uh, you figured you had it. You were, you were good. <laughs> yeah. So I was already through 2016 uh, and then adding this year, which I got for free. Because, you know, I took advantage of a really old Christmas present, and uh, now I'm through 2017. So, you know, I guess I signed a contract extension, but I didn't get a raise. Kind of disappointed in that. I was going to say the, uh, um, I was going to take advantage of it. Uh, however, I'm uh, checking my account. I'm good till September of 2016 already, so I'll just get it next Black Friday. <laughs> See, and that's what I was going to do until I just decided to use some of my credits that I had stored up, or dollars, whatever it is. Um, but anyways, uh, if you're not a member of iRacing, between now and December the 31st, or the end of the year, uh, is a great time to join iRacing. It's always a great time to join. For it's the always a great time. Always a great time. But now is especially a great time because every membership is at half price. Uh, you can sign up for one month, three month, not six months, one year, and two years. Uh, that's a joke from last week's show. Um, but you can sign up at iRacing.com slash membership. Callback. <laughs> uh, slash membership. Um, but obviously, um, this is for new members only. So if you're an existing member, you'll have to use the one that Trevor talked about. Uh, but right now, uh, definitely a good time to take advantage of that because you can get some really good deals. Um, and as we talked about before, if you're a little unsure if you want to join iRacing and you want to test it out, don't do the two-year deal. No. 
Because um, that would be sign up for the one month. <laughs> or the three month. Maybe the three month would be a good good one to choose because then you, you get enough time to really experience it. True enough. And, and it was one of those things where, you know, it, like I said, it just might not be your cup of tea. It might be like, hey, you know what, this is good, but, man, I don't know, Call of Duty, so, you know. <laughs> what? Well, that's what all those youngins are playing now, isn't it? They're, they're into the calls of duties and stuff. <laughs> youngins, wow. Um, well, I'm an yeah, old, sure. so, I mean, you know. I... Yeah, that's right, I forgot you were old and about to die. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm sad. I don't want to yeah, die. I should be. Well, you know. <laughs> It happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Speaking of promotions, well, yeah, true enough, and we are. Uh, one thing that you may, uh, they do this sort of thing all the time, and you may not notice it, but if you actually, and they usually put it at the, the very top of the general forums, but in case you missed it, what they'll usually do is they'll put um, a particular sponsor, and they will use them as a uh, promotion for a season or a period of time, and they'll say, hey, you can win some prizes for uh, from them if you put your, uh, you know, their logo on your car and do some official racing kind of thing. So, this time around, it is Thrustmaster, who, as you may or may not know, but probably know, make uh, a lot of wheel-type attachments, which, hmm, for a sim racing community, seems like a popular thing to have. Unless you need a washing machine, in which case it would be kind of cool if Maytag did it. But, you know, this is Thrustmaster. So, uh, Thrustmaster uh, apparently has two new wheels, the TX and the T300RS, and you have a thought on this, sir. Maybe Andy should take his washing machine that he just bought and try to attach it to a comet, like those people over on the other side of the pond did. Because it was the size of a washing machine. Did so. you say a comet? Yeah, a comet. Like uh, a celestial body floating through the, space? The thing flying through outer space. Okay. Were you not aware that they did that? They attached a washing machine to it? Well, something that was shaped like, okay, the size, not shaped like. Hmm. Where were you on that? Like, this was like a huge dill. No news nothing. in Canada? <laughs> it's too cold here, man. Like, we got like a foot and a half of snow out there. It's minus 22 degrees Celsius. I don't even know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it, I think it's even below zero Fahrenheit, for comedy's sake, so... I'm too cold to think, man. Okay. Like it's as cold as a comet here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna attach a washing machine to my car, drive around, pretend I'm a comet, and everything will be great. <laughs> be, it'll be loud. Please take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if uh, you don't want to take a picture of me dragging a washing machine around with my brand new car, well, my brand new to me car, um, does that ever establish the fact that I actually did get a, a replacement car for the car that died? Because I know I let people know that my old car died. But, anyway, I have a new car I think now. everybody just assumed. Yeah, I do. It's a Lexus. I'm fancy now. It's an old You know what Lexus, Lexus. comes from? Or is it a branch off of? No, it's a branch off of. No. Uh, Ford? <laughs> Yoda. I know. <laughs> it's a good car, too. Anyway... Mm. Here is your chance to win one of these wheel and pedal sets. Uh, the rules are simple. Run the Thrustmaster logo, which is found in the iRacing paint shop, in the primary sponsor location, and race in at least 10 official races during the promotion period, which is the uh, 27th of November, so like, what, yesterday? Uh, 2014 to March the 17th, 2015. And you'll automatically be entered to win a brand new Thrustmaster TX or Thrustmaster T300 RS wheel and pedal set courtesy of Thrustmaster. So, uh, and that's it. And that's it. They do, like I said, they do that a lot with these sort of um, promotions. Uh, and uh, one thing to note, if you do use training paints, as I'm sure a lot of you do, and well, our poll kind of showed that way back when, whenever we made that poll, um, that does not count. It has to be using the iRacing paint shop. Now, you can go into the paint shop and put uh, the primary sponsor as Thrustmaster on your car and then run your custom paint scheme, and I'm pretty sure that still counts <laughs> because as far as the iRacing service is concerned, you ran Thrustmaster even though you had your you know cool Greg Biffle yeah. uh, thing on there anyway. Because they don't actually sit there and look for paint schemes with Thrustmaster. What They, right. they just use their... 
information from the website to tell them that you've had that selected. So, so that's a little way around that. But um, anyway, like I said, they, they, they do these sorts of things all the time. So it's always a good idea to check the uh, top of the forums whenever a season starts. And, uh, or in this case, uh, mid-season, which is a weird one for them because normally they run during a season. Uh, but it's probably because we have this weird uh, half a week season thing going, whatever it is. Uh, so uh, they're doing it a little bit differently this time around. But it's always good to check the forums there and say, hey, you know what? Who should I have my primary sponsor on all my cars in order to have a chance at winning a cool prize? Well, this Trading time, paints. Thrustmaster! I don't think the uh, Trading Paints has a cool prize. Doesn't matter. Still uh, a cool sponsor. It is. Uh, speaking of cool things, uh, just something I noticed when I was actually checking my uh, account information, they added something in there that was pretty cool that I uh, haven't seen before because I haven't been in my account that often. They actually have a volume discount eligibility little bar mm -hmm. that indicates how, um, yeah, as everybody, you know, there's different levels of discounts you get on new content based on how much of the other content you have. I'm not going to go through all the rules that are available on the site. Uh, but they actually have like a little slider bar that actually shows you how far along you are in a little, a little, uh, what do you call that? Like uh, at the help button that you just kind of mouse over and it tells you stuff. Tooltip. That's it. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually telling you, um, you know, what uh, cars you owned and what tracks you own. And apparently I own 93% of all available content. Oh, yeah. Dear. And also if you go to the cars page and then the tracks page, it'll also tell you there too what, how much you own right. of each thing. I own a hundo percento. Yeah, there's a few things I don't have, and that's just the uh, the second nationwide car, the Toyota on the, on the Gen 6 side, and... See, you should buy the Toyota now because you have a Lexus. Uh, It'd be like driving your uh, street car, sort I, of. Not really. Not at all. It'd be like that, but completely different. <laughs> <sighs> Did you know, according to this... That and, you want to buy the Toyota? Yes, I did know that. And uh, I have no reason to disbelieve uh, it. I have been a member since... Uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, uh, August the 7th of 2008. Hmm. In case you were curious how long I've been kicking around these parts. That's a long time. Um, I joined on December the 9th, I think it was, 2000. Or it might have been, eh, I have to look that up. <laughs> but it was around, it was either December the 9th or December the 12th. I think it was December the 9th um, in 2010. Oh, 2010, Pfft, rookie. I've been around. That's more since, wins. I've been around since the beginning of time, I tell you, man. You know, I... You're an elder. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a forum post there, you know, older iRacers. I haven't posted in there yet. It's like, hey, anybody out there who's older? Yeah, shut up. Still a kid at heart. As long as I'm still playing video games, as far as I'm concerned, I'm still a kid. <laughs> this is true. That's what I'm going to hold on to. <clears throat> uh, um, so, those are the uh, promotions, so all kinds of good ways to save money if you want to renew and you want, or you want to join in. And, hey, if you're a member, a chance to win a cool prize. So, some cool stuff going on. December the money. 12th. December the 12th is a good day. Not today. It's going to be my anniversary on iRacing. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Should I get an iRacing a gift? I don't think okay. so. Okay. Just, just checking. No, no. Anyway, moving right along to our racing experiences. As everybody knows, I've been kind of traveling a bunch and haven't had many experiences. So, so last night. I sat down. I knew we were doing the show tonight. And I uh, got the kids to bed and sat down and plugged in my wheel. And I did a very untrevor like thing. Everybody knows that you know, whenever I go and try to go and do a race or do some stuff, my plan is that I will sit down and I will find out what I'm going to do for that week, do a little bit of practice, you know, get ready, do all these things. I sat down. It was like tw it was 9-12. And I looked at the little race guide thing, you know, that uh, thing that we, they put in, which is cool, that I thought was cool and nobody ever uses. And I looked at it and said, all right, what's starting at 9.15? Because whatever it is, I'm doing it. Because I haven't had a race in a 
few weeks because I've been doing busy traveling. I'm doing a show tomorrow night, and gosh darn it, I'm not going to do another show that I haven't even touched my wheel in. So I sat down and I looked through the list, and the winner was Mazda Cup at Watkins Glen. Um, the version without the uh, bus stop, but you know, I was thankful for less turns because I logged in, I uh, registered for the race, loaded up and said practice, got two laps in and said, all right, let's do this thing. <laughs> I started in 14th position out of 16 cars, and um, I was doing okay for a while. And then I ended up with a, um, towards the back of the pack, uh, and I was with a guy who was of similar skill. And <laughs> we went into the big, uh, it's actually called the carousel, the one after where the bus stop would be. Like that big sweeping right or yeah, right hand turn that leads you back that you go down to the boot if you weren't anyway. It could be all the carousel. I don't know. I'm going around that big sweeping turn. He's um, I think it is. He's behind me, and I wanted to get out of his way to let him by because uh, it looked like he was faster. And uh, let's just say there's a really good. It's really good. There's a lot of runoff there because for some reason. I thought the best way to get out of his way was to not really break for the turn and then just slide off into the concrete and manage to catch it and uh, and get it back on the track. And, and I just laugh and get on the mic and it's like, well, whoops. And he comes back on kind of, you know, with a little bit of a worried voice. And it's like, man, I thought I gave you lots of room. It's like, no, you gave me lots of room. I just decided to take all the room apparently. So... <laughs> So I followed him for a bunch of laps, and then he started slowing down a bit. And then he went to let me by. It's like, okay. Uh, and in this coming into the same corner, it's like, okay, uh, yeah, Trevor, it's like, uh, you know, take you know, uh, take me in the braking zone type thing. I'll, I'll let you by type thing. It's like, it's like really? you, Like it was not three laps ago. You saw what I did in here is what I'm thinking. It's like, this is where you can want me to go by you <laughs> on the inside? So I slowed way down, made it past him, and... I made it down that uh, that I don't know back stretch, whatever that straight point after that uh, that point, and then you do the uh, the left just before you do the right onto the front stretch again. And I and I've been hitting that one like that was the one corner that I'd gotten. Like out of all the corners, you know, I was kind of like because I hadn't had a chance to practice. Obviously, I, every other corner, other than that one little slide through the carousel at one time, every other corner I'd gotten, you know okay-ish type thing, but the one corner I had no problems with was that second to last corner, because I was just slowing down just enough, hitting the apex, sliding just out to that rumble strip, then sliding back around and set myself up for that last turn, except for the one lap that this guy let me by. <laughs> I go into that corner, and I miss the apex, and I take too much speed, and I slide into the gravel just with my, <laughs> my back tires, turn completely sideways, and go wham, nose into the wall in front of him. And then he, you know, cues his mic, you know, right calmly. It's like, you just don't like me behind you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> like, well, apparently not. And I hobbled into the bits and uh, got repaired and ended up finishing 13th out of, uh, with only just the two incident points. Like, it, that was the only thing I did wrong was that one nudge in the wall, but I killed the car. But it was, uh, it was fun to be spontaneous for once because I figured, you know what, it's, the, the cup, you know, the Mazda MX-5, which is a car I'm comfortable with. It's the Glen, so it's a track I'm comfortable with. And they even took out most of the turns. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, all right, cares, you know, the bus stop, nah, forget that. You don't need to go through there. And uh, the boot, nah, just, just go straight past that. That'll be fine. It's like, all right, so I think there's only like two turns now, so I think I can handle this. <laughs> which, uh, incidentally, ends up being, like, for a beginner road racer, the MX-5 at the Glen is probably a real good combination because it's, uh, <clears throat> like, there's not that many turns and they're really not that challenging, but they have a varying degree of, you know, of, uh, of angle to them. So, you know, it's probably a, not a bad starting place. Uh, it might even be easier than Lime Rock, I would think. You know, wouldn't you take out, like I said, half the turns in the thing, so... You know, and actually climbing the MX-5 going up the, uh, when you're doing the uphill part there, like you're straight on the gas. I mean, I know a lot of cars can be, but some you have to be real 
ginger. This is not one you just go because you can't go fast enough to screw that up <laughs> in that car. So while climbing up hills, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure it was screaming. I'd be going, really? The hill again? Ah. Uh. <laughs> but anyway, so I committed that I was at least going to get one race in, and I did, and it was not great, but I raced. <laughs> And I'm on the road again next week, so, yeah. But then I'm done for the year. So I'll have Christmas holidays, and I'll get a chance to get some racing in and, and whatnot. I don't think we're going anywhere. So finally, I'll get and as far as I know, like the first two months of next year, in-house, no traveling. So it'll be, I'll be able to get back in the groove of things. So that'll be nice. Oh. <sighs> so anyway, that was my experience. Did you get a chance to do anything? I haven't driven a single thing on iRacing since November the 10th. Wow. When I took the checker flag at Homestead, I have not raced since then. Uh, hmm. It's probably the second longest break I've ever taken. It could become the longest break that I've ever taken. <laughs> if you just, um, <laughs> you got a record going now? <laughs> yeah, well, the, <clears throat> the other break that I took was because I was on a vacation, and so I was just literally gone. Um, for about basically 14 days. Uh, but then I was gone for an, a couple of extra days. And so in total, I think it ended up being like 18 days that I was away from iRacing. And um, that's where I'm at right now. Hmm. I see. Which is unusual for you, obviously. Yeah. Um, but a lot of that's just taking a break. Some of it's... I've been enjoying playing like The Sims and NBA 2K15, and some of it's been that basketball season has started back up, so I've been more interested <clears throat> in watching the games and stuff. And um, also the holidays, or the, or the holiday that we just went through, um, kind of makes me busy, even though it's funny because I've been off work, so I'm like less busy, but yet more busy uh, with everything going on. Um, but I, I was actually going to try to get on tonight, but did not do that. Um, so I uh, probably won't race anymore tonight, like after the show, but maybe tomorrow or Sunday. I'm going to go on a race. The, um, the uh, Power Series has shifted to a new league, and they start racing next Sunday. So I'm probably going to run part-time still with them and just muck about with them. Um yeah, I noticed they were they were they were moved over from uh, from the ISRA to something that has four letters that sounds the same but it's slightly different. I couldn't pull right now it's if like you want <laughs> ITSR or something like that. I'm not sure, but well, I signed up for the series, so I should know. Um, but I uh, I don't know. I don't know which races I'm going to run. The only race that I know that is on their schedule as of this moment is the first one, which is at California. And I think John Hensley is trying to kill us. <laughs> Why is that? Calif he made the California race 150 laps. And I'm just sitting there thinking, wow, <laughs> that's an endurance race. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll probably end up doing that. And I'm almost, I'm quite tempted to just start in the back because I'm only going to be running part-time with them, just a few select races. And... Um, so, I mean, I'm not points racing, right. and it's kind of a big, wide track, and I love California. First time I ever drove it, I kind of started middle of the field, um, and it was a lot of fun. You could pass. You could run a lot of different lanes. So I'm, I'm tempted. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to be there, but I'm really tempted to just start, like, shotgun on the field and just have fun. And when do they, when do they start up again? December the 7th. So not this week, but next week. Um, but I'll I'll probably race before then. Uh, I I want to get on and, and goof off like in the Star Mazda. Somebody told me I needed to do that. Um, and then I still want to race the Formula One car. I want to race the Silver Crown. I want to do this. I want to do that. So many things I want to do. I'm just not doing it. But I did do something last night. Was it racing uh, related? It's sim racing related, yes. Um, I clicked a purchase button. Oh, yes, right. On something that... Uh, so this is about as 
good of a story for an experience as I can tell you. Right, and and for the uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know what he bought last night. Like he yes. he has kept it's been mum on the whole situation. I just know he bought something and it got him right excited. So I'm I'm listening along with you guys on this one. Yeah, nobody knows about this <laughs> um, at all. So. Uh, first of all, I will start off by saying that it is not something that I needed, uh, but it is more something that I wanted. Um, now, most of this stuff is something that I wanted, but um, a few of the things I needed to make this work, this whole setup that I have work the way that I wanted to. Um, uh, it's something also that I have literally debated about getting um, for just over a year. Um, I have, uh, that's, that's how secretive this is, man. That's... Like, don't wait. See, you can keep your secrets with me. <laughs> no. Um, I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm the team owner here and I, I mean, like keeping secrets from me about, you know, embettering yourself and becoming a better sim racer. Like these, these, well, I'm assuming that it's going to help that. That's something that's going to make you worse. <laughs> yeah, actually it's going to make me really horrible. Um, uh, so if you really want to ruin your career, buy it. No, um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's like, and the reason why I've debated for a year is because I'm a fairly cautious person with money. Mm. I don't just jump out there and buy things. Um, not that that's bad, but sometimes it can be. I, um, I, that, that's, that's me. Like every time steam comes up with a sale is me with my wallet. You know. I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. I have 200 games that I never play. I have, uh, oh, I don't have it open right now. I think I checked it last night, and I'm 281 games I have registered oh in my Steam. Gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is horrible. I have like four games. <laughs> um, so, anywho, back to the story. I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly cautious with my money, and I. Especially when it's something that's fairly expensive. Um, like all of this stuff that I have, like the Obetta cockpit, which is not that expensive, but it is kind of. Um, and the triple screens and the seat, especially the seat. Emphasis on the seat. Um, were pretty expensive, so I I, uh, I debated for a while. Um, I remember it took me like three weeks to decide if I wanted the seat or not. And I kept like reviewing things. That's the other thing I do. I review the crap out of something. Smart. Yes, um, and I don't just read bad reviews. I, I often read, I pretty much read every review, but I, I often read a lot of the good reviews because sometimes, uh, just a fun side fact, um, there might be something that I want to do with a certain product that I'm buying and somebody else might have the same idea and might kind of help you with how they did it. So a lot of times they put that in their um good reviews so I, I read every review sometimes you get a stupid review like this thing is stupid and this is they don't stupid. explain why <laughs> this is stupid because reasons you know? <laughs> yeah and I'm like but 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 why um, so anyways uh, I, I'm very cautious and smart and take the time to make sure that what I'm buying is going to be worth it uh, and this <clears throat> particular item that I bought um, is the same same way. Um, now there weren't as many reviews on this because it is a new product. And anybody that's paying attention is probably going to know more about now what I'm talking about. Um, I'm still lost. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I can tell. Um, <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> now I'm sad. <laughs> you're like one out of one people that don't know. No. Um, so, I almost actually got this thing as a, I guess, I don't want to say a beta tester, because I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but I, I was going to be like a tester person, and I almost got it through doing that. Um, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, because the, when I talked to the guy about testing it for him, I was like, hey, you know, I... I would like to test it for you. Is that okay? Um, and he said, yeah, sure. And he was like, talk to me about it. And, and even, you know, was like, are you willing to sign a don't tell anybody a form? NDA. Yes. Um, I, I knew what it was. I just forgot the 
letters. Uh, and like we were moving kind of along, and then he's like, let me go ask the, the guy that's making the little motherboard thing on it. And, um, you know, well, I'll get back to you. Well, uh, unfortunately, they did not need to test it anymore, so I did not get the testing version of it. But that's okay. Okay. The thing oh, that I purchased. Wait, wait, wait. I think I might know where you're going with this, but anyway. Want to take a guess? I don't know. Somehow it, it popped in my mind, but then I thought, no, that can't be right. I, the, the thing that popped in my head was an Oculus Rift. Oh, no. No. Because no, that'd be so cool. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I actually do know somebody that has one, and I've we've actually talked about me using it with iRacing just to see what it's like. Hmm. Um, but no, that is not what it is. Okay. Man, you're not even close. That's a, that makes me even more excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, the thing that I ended up purchasing after much debate, and I promise you guys I debated about this for a long time in my head, but there were too many, you have to do this for me to not do it. And I broke down last night when they went on sale for the first time in the history of them. You're killing me here. <laughs> I'm good at building stuff up, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, and uh, I may have even bought the first one. I don't know. Because I bought it so quickly when they first released. Because uh, I stayed up waiting on the thing. Mm. Um, I purchased Michael Main's new Sim Pedals. Ah. That just released. And they are going to be really good. Uh, Michael, of course, I've talked. To, we've talked about before. Is pretty, pretty close to the show and with the league and the RCRL league and everything. And I've gotten to know him a lot, and I've heard a lot of things from a lot of people that I know and trust mm -hmm. through iRacing. And those pedals seem to be the real deal. So I was like, hey, I'm going for it. So I pulled the plug and went for it. Okay, so what's um. What's the what's the what's so special with these pedals? What's the 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 defining factor of uh, of these pedals? Um, probably the brake pedal is the biggest thing. Um, they have, and I went with the you can get an upgrade kit for them that makes them a hydraulic brake system, mm -hmm. which basically in the end with that and the way the pedals are made, it's almost as if you're taking your pedals from a real race car and placing them on your sim rig uh, obviously with some slight modifications um, and that was kind of the one thing that sold me was the way the brake pedal is because the brake pedal is pretty important well, uh, yeah. on iRacing uh, especially when you're road racing at least from what I found um, the ability to drive in so deep into a turn jab the brake and then almost immediately get back on the gas you can't really do with low end pedals um, now the club sports which is the pedals that I currently have I've been able to do that but not as well as I believe that I'll be able to do it on these pedals and I do know somebody that has the club sport pedals tested these pedals uh, the Michael Maines pedals and said that he was able to do more of what I just said Drive right. in later, hit the brakes. So, and now for the knowing, record, j just uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'm not really because I always do because that's what this is. It's a conversation, man. It's not a monologue. But uh, the pedals you're running right, it. the pedals you're running right now are still the G27 pedals, right? No, no. I have the Club Sport version two pedals. I thought you were running the G27 from when you're and then the DFGT uh, wheel. I used to have the G27 pedals, um, but they kind of unofficially broke oh. I guess um, they didn't like physically they did not break but the cable for the throttle um, somehow screwed up and so now the throttle like pushes itself even though I'm not touching the throttle well that's not good uh, yeah. <laughs> so those have been ditched I still have them but they've they've been ditched okay I really should probably just like throw them away I'm looking for somebody actually that is not on iRacing racing and plays like Gran Turismo, not to disc Gran Turismo, but, and that, like, doesn't care if the throttle sticks some. It's not bad. Like, it's not horrible, horrible. But for me, on iRacing, it was horrible. Uh, that, you know, is 
like a 10 year old kid that doesn't really care if the pedal works perfectly that I could just sell it to them. I sold it to my cousin because he was going to get into sim racing but then he decided he was not going to get into sim racing and therefore gave them back to me. They were um, like, nah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyways, um, so it, these pedals are, I mean, I, I promise you guys, I re, yes, Greg, um, I promise you that I have studied the heck out of them and I am ready for, to see what these things can do. Um, they, they're really pretty amazing. Like I, I, I will promise you that just from everything that Michael has put into these pedals, um, and I was going to try to see maybe if I could tell you guys a little bit more about them. But um, they're all made of uh, still. Like, every part of it is pretty much still. So they're, like, pretty much every part on this is high-end. Like, there's not something that's made cheap. Right. Which, on some pedals, like, half of it will be made really high quality and the other half is cheap. You know, like, plastic stuff. Um, so... I uh, I don't know. I, I'm I supposedly these are supposed to ship next Friday, December the fifth, and then it'll probably take like three to seven days for me to get them. Um, so probably a couple of weeks or so right. I'll have them, um, and then it shouldn't be that difficult to install. The the neat thing that, and this is one of the reasons why I love Michael Main and his company, and I'm not a spokesperson for them, but I just love what they do there, is that they he's created the brackets. For the about a resolution, resolution, revolution, whatever, and the ozone, so that you can actually, quote unquote, bolt these things onto your abutta. And I have the ozone, and of course got the brackets for it. Right. Um, and that makes me happy. the The other thing that I like about these pedals, and this is just for me, and it may sound a little cheesy to some people, but is they are in the correct direction. So like the pedals that I have right now, I could invert them, but they're going from the ground up. These pedals hang down sort of in the air, like a real car. So that to me is kind of the uh, awesome thing that I like. Um, and that is something that I am looking forward to playing around with. Uh, I've like I said, I really debated it, and I almost decided not to do it, but then I was like, eh, life's short, I'm pretty involved with this hobby, why not? Right, and I mean, and uh, for those who don't know, I mean, uh, you know, we, you know, we speak we speak the praises of Michael Main and, and, and Main, uh, Main Performance PCs, uh, but uh, Michael's one of the guys who's heavily involved with the iRacing community, he's, uh, you know, we've had him on the show talking to him, he's a great guy, he, he he's one of those stand up guys that just stands behind what he does and is always quick to jump in and help out with uh people people in the i racing community like chad's mentioned <clears throat> excuse me with the uh, uh rcrl uh did some sponsors and uh sponsorship there gave some great prizes and he, he's kind of always around like he's always somewheres in the community doing something with somebody for somebody um so that's why we speak so highly of him. Like like Chad said, we're not spokesmen for you know for his company, but you know we've we've spoken to the man. We we've seen his actions, and that speaks to the character of him. So that's why we speak so highly of him on the show here. So yeah, and he's pretty good at racing too. <laughs> well, there's that too, I guess. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean I've I've raced quite a lot with him, um, and that was fun too. Like just kind of a side story. Like he he raced it because he's. Um, sponsoring the RCRL, he raced there for a little while when he can. Obviously, he's a pretty busy guy, um, and he actually he's he, I guess he's one of those people that doesn't like a whole lot of radio chatter when he's racing, kind of like me. As I say, um, just like you, <laughs> like a match made in heaven. Um, and so he actually came down into uh, the Teamspeak channel in the RCRL that we had for our team and was like, "Hey, can I hang out with you?" And I was like, "Sure." And so every week we would just hang out on team speak and we kind of talk some, you know, during, under cautions and stuff. And and we were always up there racing around each other and it was fun. So I, getting to know him through that after already buying the PC from him was kind of neat. Um, and it just kind of 
double proved, I guess. You know, the, the Michael really is what most people see of him, uh, which is stand-up guy with a lot of good equipment, even though it is a little expensive, but it's good. Well, there's a couple things that have to be, uh, you know, established from this story, other than, uh, you know, the fact that you have these pedals, and can't wait to hear how they work out. Uh, one, apparently, uh, a listener in our chat here, a little guard dog, not little, 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 I, I can't, I can't do that, I'm, I'm not young enough to say that. A uh, little guard dog has mentioned that he thinks he knows what's wrong with your G27 pedals and how to fix it for a $20 part, so we'll have to get, make a note of that. Uh, and two, uh, what are you doing with your current pedals, and uh, how much will it cost to ship them to Canada? Because I can't, I can't pay you for them, but you always complain. You always say, you know what, Trevor, your racing sucks because your pedals suck. I maintain it's because of my lack of skill. But you know, you think that if I had better pedals, that everything would be great. So you know. Well, okay. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to be in Virginia next week, man. So you can just drive them up to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to become the world's greatest race car driver just because of your pedal upgrade, but it will help you. Um, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with my club sports because I've had them for just over two years. Uh, I had to replace the throttle sensor on it, mm. but now it works good as new, and they gave it to me for free. Um, and they're really, in all honesty, in perfect condition, and that was the whole part of the whole debate of why you know do I need to buy these pedals because I have good working ones right um, there's a part of me that wants to just keep them as backup you know in case something were to happen with the main PC pedals I could easily just throw those back on and you know not miss any important races hmm. the other part of me wants to sell them uh, and the other part of me doesn't have a clue what to do I haven't decided yet but I'm still going to be using these for like two weeks. Um, yeah, I know. But yeah, I, I honestly, uh, the first thought that went through my head as soon as I hit the purchase button was, Trevor Cameron needs a good set of pedals. <laughs> and Trevor Cameron spends all his money on Steam games that he's never going to play, so it's not like he can give me money for them. I mean, I'm also going to be in the yeah. wrong side of Virginia next week, so it's, you know, and, and you don't have your new pedals anyway, so it's not like you can grind the, drive them up to me, you know. Plus, I'm sure the customs officer would have, uh, you know, questions, major electronics <laughs> across borders and things. I don't know. I mean, I've got a bunch of cards because I've got all this? This, all this status and stuff. So I slide through things pretty quick, but, you know, you never know. Although I got all friskified there on the last trip through because I set off their, does this guy have explosives on his hands machine there for some reason. And I, I'm sitting there, like, I, they go through, it's like, it's like, oh, okay, you know, you set off the machine. And, like, I'm looking at the machine, and, like, they wipe your hands, and they wipe, you know, a, a couple of areas and whatever, and they put it through the machine. And the thing just flashes, alarm, alarm, alarm. And, like, I look over, it's like, well, that can't be good. <laughs> it's like, good thing I have a long time before my flight, because I have a feeling I'm going to be a while. <laughs> And so yeah. they walk me through the security, and it's like, you know, it's like, okay, I have to frisk you down. You know, is that, do you want to go to a, you know, a separate area and stuff? It's like, nah, I'm good, man. Have, yeah, have fun. <laughs> you know? And then I get to the end, it's like, oh, you shut off the machine doors. You know, uh, why you, you know, why? Look, and it's like, how should I know? <laughs> like, why? Oh, well, you know, it's because of all the bombs I was making before I showed up at the airport, but I didn't bring them here, so I figured everything was cool. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, to have them, it's like, yeah, somebody set it off five minutes before you, and then I see behind me there's a couple other people are in the, the bad line. It's like, you know, as an electronics technician, might I suggest that you check your machine, because I've never seen anybody be picked up by before, and I can see four people in this radius around me. So I'm pretty sure we're not a terrorist cell, and uh, maybe your machine might have some issues. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, if you don't give me your club sports, I mean, you know, if if uh, Mr. Mister Dog here, his uh, suggestion is correct, you can give me your G27 pedals, because you said they're pretty good, you know. They go right yeah, I mean, I, a lot of people have dissed G27 pedals, uh, saying, you know, that they're not very good, and I used them for a long time and had success, so I, do, I don't think they're horrible. Um, but you're going to have to figure out how to make the throttle work. It, I've got the chat here, man. I've got to get a. Uh, oh, it, it's it's up there, you know. I, uh, <laughs> but seriously, like I I wouldn't mind to give you those at all. It's the circular potentiometer has died. 
Uh, apparently, I can get uh, the sensor for about twenty dollars. So you know, boom, done. Twenty dollar pedals. Go for it. Woo. <laughs> Plus, you know, uh, you know $500 of customs to get it across the border or something. I don't know. It can't be that much. <laughs> I don't know. Border people are funny. They think they, they think they get money for everything. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, uh, these are pretty pretty uh, neat-looking pedals. So we'll see how it goes. Yep. I can't wait to hear uh, to hear all about them and... Uh, Get a uh, a review for them. You know, if you get them in a couple of weeks, whatever, be hooking on to our uh, our Christmas break type thing. But uh, either right before the break or right after the break, can't wait to hear a review of them and uh, and hopefully hear how awesome they are and uh, maybe push some more people uh, Michael's way to uh, to get some cool pedals. Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, moving on to the last segment for the show. Uh, we are going to talk about, like I said, uh, at the opening of the show, uh, there was a topic that kind of blew up in the, in the forums, and I'll kind of talk about that in a second here. Um, and, and it was quite simply, and that, that, that's what, that was the part that uh, confused me. Oh, no, I moved my mouse to the wrong side. Oh, there's the weird things on my picture, but that's okay. Um, and the topic was, does iRacing need AI i.e. artificial intelligence, uh, you know, computer-controlled cars, to future-proof itself. Uh, a user from Australia, so he obviously listens to our show because I'm pretty sure all of Australia does, um, M.D. Gourley. Good night, um, Mike. <laughs> um, Somebody listen, told me one time that they hate hearing that. Probably. Much like I hate being told that I say about a weird or I say a all the time. Yeah. You just say about weird. I do not say about weird. I do not no, say I do not say a say. boot. A boot <laughs> a boot is something you put on your foot. That's not what I say. I don't know. One of the other Canadian friend that we have, uh that used to be on our team, Jeff Ford, always made fun of me for saying huh. He thought huh was the stupidest word ever. Well, I I I would challenge that saying A is much better than saying huh. But uh, hmm. it's, uh, uh. <laughs> okay, please continue. Anyway, um, let's see where are you at? There you are. Um, yeah, MD Gorley, um, Gorley. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Gorley. Um, put down a topic that, that I mentioned there about uh, does I racing need, need AI, and put out some a, a well thought out post. Uh, I, I thought. You know, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't one of those, uh, be looking to start a war post. It was, hey, here's a thought I had in my head. What do you guys think kind of thing? Um, some of the responses were very good. Some of the spons, you know, response, there was some very good discussion back and forth on this. But it always, it always, <laughs> it always amazes me the ability for people in our forums, I mean, you know, I'm part of that community, but some man, some people in the forums will just take anything and just hate on it. You know, there's some some people, you know, simple, no, all right, that's cool, you know, and then people are like, man, you know, why are you doing this? You're stupid. There's blah 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 blah. Why would you even think of this and stuff? It's like he's just making, you know, making a point. It's like, oh yeah, this is one of those forums where if you say anything that's wrong, you know, that's not what his opinion, then you're wrong and you're a stupid head. It's like. No, that's that's also not what he said. But anyway. Uh, so it, that's it's something that kind of comes around a lot. I mean, the sim has been around for what, 6 years now. 6 years, is that right? Yeah, 6 years now. And every now and again people bring up this topic, you know, hey, do we need to add AI into the sim? Uh, it was pretty even back and forth when it came to um uh, <laughs> AI is the past. I, no, no, I'm pretty sure computer AI games. AI is the real MVP. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure video games will always need some sort of computer opponents, whether it's racing games or otherwise. Anyway. Hopefully just, some of my American friends will get what I just said. Uh, <laughs> I know Greg will. <laughs> so anyway, a lot of good points. Um, and uh, Tyler in uh, in... Particular uh, when he brought us to our uh, to our attention, he thinks 
He's on the no side. Uh, just a, a couple quotes from what he said uh, was, uh, let's see, iRacing is all, whoa, get out of there, Google. I put it on, it's like, put Tyler's face right over my words. It's like, no, no, I don't need, I mean, it's a fine looking young gentleman, but I don't need him all over the words that I'm trying to speak right now. iRacing is real people all the time. This is, that is the reason I love iRacing, and that is my go-to point when describing it to other people. It also answers a ton of questions. That's why races go off at certain times. That is why there are no one-sided incidents. That is why it is dynamic, interesting, and exciting. When I played Gran Turismo, the racing line strategy and passing points were always the same for a given event. If I mess something up, I just restart it, and it, is, it was exactly the same experience. The goal wasn't to race, but to pass and finish first. <coughs> Rookie Oval beats that, th beats that thinking out of you. The goal, is now to, the goal is now to race, with the ideal result being finishing first. Game changer. Gran Turismo markets as the real driving simulator. I want iRacing to market as the real racing as the real racing simulator. Um, and it makes some good points there. And like I said, there was some good um, good back and forth uh, going uh, on this topic. And Chad has decided that he is going to argue for the fact that no, we do not need AI into iRacing. And I'm going to argue the points as to why it might be a good idea. So, Mr. Chad. Why do you hate AI? Is Why AI the past? Why you go first? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you don't have to go first. I can go first. I just talked for a bunch, so I figured you'd want to deter. <laughs> yeah, well, you've been talking a lot on the show. Um, That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now ready to present my case. Uh, no. I was um, not prepared for this, sir. <laughs> uh, I, okay, I don't hate I, AI, first of all. Uh, sometimes... I actually do find AI amusing, uh, depending on the game. Uh, but there are a few points that I, I jotted down that I of why I don't think iRacing needs to mess with AI. And some of the forum posts, uh, and I didn't read all of them, um, but there were a few people that kind of said some of the things that I'm about to say. Um, so, high five to my homies. I don't know. Um, wow, that was almost as awkward as me saying that Tyler was a fine-looking young gentleman. So, uh, but so I guess we're even now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, anyways, uh, the first reason um, that I don't think iRacing should take the time to implement AI fully, um, because, and one thing I want to point out, AI is actually in the development versions of iRacing. Um, they, I, I've seen that, I've heard somebody at iRacing, I forget who, talk about that, but I also saw it in a video where they were at like a SEMA show or an E3 or one of those types of events that iRacing goes to every now and again, mm -hmm. um, where they had a video and they had somebody driving, you know, testing out the simulator and <clears throat> they had AI cars on the track. And I think Tony Gardner was the person who was actually talking about how they've already got that in there like for development purposes and it wouldn't be hard you know to add it fully into the game uh... but then i think he said something like they may not be doing that anytime soon um, but the the first thing that and i i'm not a programmer i don't know anything about this but i don't want iRacing to take away what could potentially be a somewhat lengthy project to add AI into the sim. I don't want their, them to lose time, mm. uh, take away time, I guess, um, that they could spend on making day-to-night transitions, for example, or continuing to improve the tire model, or making that new service, surface model um, that they discussed, that we, or we talked about last week on the show. Um, to me... I mean, again, I don't know how long it would take to make AI. I imagine it can't be that difficult. But if you really want to make AI into something more than just cars going around the racetrack, uh, and you want to make them, I guess, dynamic, where they can, you know, make moves, they wreck each other, they uh, they try. Like if if you really wanted to go all out, you they try different lines, you know, if a line is not working for them. Like, if you wanted to make it so 
amazing like iRacing tends to do with everything they tend to go further than other racing titles and let's just say for example that they did that with AI mm. um, to me that would be a lot of wasted production time on something that is not as important in quotes um, at least to me and probably to most people uh, whereas I would rather have the day to night transitions right so that's my first argument. Now you can okay. speak. Now, now here's a thought. I, uh, and we've talked about it in the past with the, with having Steam, uh, uh, them rolling out onto Steam, which is going to open a whole new avenue uh, in the fact that you're going to open yourself up to a to another completely different mindset of uh, of user base. And I'm afraid that it's going to go into that great wild and have. A bunch of people having expectations obviously you know they will state what the game is moving forward you know like uh, moving into the relationship but what if I, I can see that being soured if they don't have something for that more casual audience uh, in you know launching in that sort of platform so what if they launch into Steam they have a bunch of and, and they just and they generate a bunch of negative reactions because they don't have a game because I mean you know what Steam is a gaming service, um, you know, and iRacing is not a game, you know, it is a simulation, much like you know Flight Simulator is not a game, you know, it is, a, you know, it's it's a sim. Hardcore, it's hardcore. Yeah. So I think that audience might spit it up and chew it out if it didn't have a quote unquote game element to it, maybe, yeah. you know. Much like I have Euro Truck Simulator 2 right now because I got it really cheap on Humble Bundle. Not a game. Strangely compelling. Don't understand why. But so that is that is one of my points. Now my second point is, and this is obvious, iRacing has always been real people versus real people. Um, and let me expand on what I mean by that. Um, I'm sure as many of you out there listening, and even Trevor, um, have found when you are talking to a coworker or a friend or a family member, um, or just a stranger on the street, um, that when you say, well, one of the things I like to do is eye racing, and then if they are any good at keeping the conversation going, they're going to start asking questions, what is that? Um, if they are any the good at keeping going... <laughs> If they're socially inept, they'll probably be like, uh, okay, thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Um, so one of the questions that I always get asked, and I'm sure a lot of you out there do as well, is, so do you race real people? You know, that's one of the things. In fact, the other day, a coworker was talking to me about iRacing, first time that he's ever heard about it. And the first thing he said was, so do you race against like people from around the country? And I was like, well, yes, but you also race people around the world. And then I, one of my favorite stories to tell is there was a guy that used to race in the RCRL. His name was Emerson, and I'm not going to pronounce his last name, and Trevor remembers it. It started with a um, B, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, <clears throat> didn't, we but, didn't we broadcast some races with him in it? Yes. Yeah, okay. We did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he was a really cool guy, pretty good racer, and um, he's from Brazil. And I, I always used him kind of as an example, um, largely because I was racing with him at the time, where I would tell people, you know, yeah, you race with people from all the world. In fact, every Sunday, I race with a guy from Brazil, you know, and that's pretty awesome. Um, and so my, my second point uh, about AI would be, when I tell people that iRacing is you race people from around the world, to me, that is kind of, when I'm explaining it to people, is kind of what helps me separate iRacing into a category almost in a league of its own. And where I say it's a simulation, I kind of back that up with the real people thing because... Or I help back it up. It is not the main backup, but I help back it up. And to me, if you added in AI, to me that would almost take iRacing from simulation to video game. 
Hmm. Kind of like what adding driver aids kind of did for me when they did that. I understand why they put it in there. Don't get me wrong. But it iRacing has always kind of been this serious simulation. And then when and they're like, and I'm doing this on the video, so those of you that are only listening to the audio are not going to see my lovely illustration. But um, It's not that complicated. It's one hand above another. <laughs> but it would be like taking this hand and moving it down for driving aids, and then if you added in AI, you'd really move it down. And that bothers me, because to me, it would just be like, yeah, iRacing is really awesome. It's a simulation. It's, it's so advanced. It's just like real life. But yeah, we have driving aids and computer race car drivers. Okay. That's my second point. Well, okay, so I, not directly, but it's sort of counter with, I, I agree with your point. Uh, I racing, while not the most intimidating thing to get into, I think that belongs to Dota, uh, but... Your first experience when you come into iRacing is to race with the Rookie Series. Now, anybody who goes out and races in the Rookie Series, some of us do it for fun, some of us enjoy watching it during Week 13, but I, not that's, that's not the, uh, um, the best experience of what the sim has to offer at the very beginning where you jump in with a bunch of other people who either a don't know what they're doing as well b think this is gran turismo or you know forza motorsports and are playing bumper cars and you kind of it's like well i'm racing with real people but they're all jerks you know and and <laughs> you know is this what this sim is all about well i I don't have to pay a monthly fee to go on my Gran Turismo on my PlayStation and, and get beaten up by, you know, you know, some you know, AI cars and, you know, all these people are here and, you know, that's that maybe that's not a good opening experience for them. Maybe it might be better to show them the splendor of the physics and the tire models and the laser scan tracks where they can go out there and they can race with, you know, some maybe not even that smart AI cars, but to get a feel what it's like to be in traffic around some of these tracks and get a feel for some of the features iRacing racing has away from the unwashed masses before they they hit that level you know almost a not even a demo like i mean or maybe even two you know the you know the fact of put it into some sort of demo uh, version of it so that you know here's a slice without the people the people come later well once we get you hooked on everything that's in here then we'll show you the people and they you know why you need to get out of rookie series as quickly as you can. <laughs> so, you know, it might be a, a better way to showcase what the other parts of iRacing that are unique, um, you know, t compared to other, other games or, you know, I, we, okay. And Kate, before yeah. we get a bunch of emails, we're throwing around the term game, you know, we know it's a sim. It's just, you're the it's, one that's going to get an email. It's fitting yeah. into the conversation. Yeah, that's because I took the crappy side to argue. <laughs> <laughs> you could have chose my side. Well, I again, I told you. I said, you know what? I know. You pick. You, you I'll, I'll the talk option. the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's your fault. Um, the uh, the third reason is is I'm not going to argue as much, um, but I guess it's. <clears throat> And I, I'm going to be careful how I say this. It also concerns me, and it kind of, you kind of brought this up a little while ago, about how you mentioned Steam mm -hmm. and how iRacing is going to be on Steam. Um, Eventually. Some time <laughs> in the next 15 years. Uh, and it, that supposedly is going to bring in a different style of audience um, that might be interested in joining iRacing, which is great for business. For, from a from a, a business standpoint of iRacing. Um, however, if you added in AI, like you were talking about earlier, there is a certain group of people on Steam that might look at iRacing as, you know, they want it to be a game, and they say, ooh, AI, this is appealing. You know, I would love to go mess around with that. To me, that almost kind of scares me if some of those people are a uh, part of the group that would treat it like a game 
and would not take it to the level of seriousness that iRacing kind of is. I mean, you don't have to go all out on the seriousness, but if you're just totally away from being serious and you're you're into the bumper car mode, um, that kind of scares me. You know, I, I and I'm not trying to put down those people, but let's face it, they exist. Yep. Um, and it would right right now they're screaming into their microphone their microphone on Xbox Live in their mom's basement. No, <laughs> um, so uh, it it would concern me from a uh, standpoint of I don't know what the right word is that I'm looking for, but um, uh, I wish I could think of it. <clears throat> but it it would bother me that we might bring in some of those people because they would kind of ruin some of the fun, I guess. Um, which, I, I mean, you might say, well, how can you be so serious and have fun? Uh, but that's where the fun comes in, because it's so serious. Right. Um, so that's kind of my scared argument. Okay. Um, okay, I will, uh, I think I have two points that kind of tie into each other. Um, what if... They introduced AI and they brought it in as a training aid and, and wasn't available in online sessions. So it was something rather than to add on to time trial, which nobody does, uh, practice sessions and then your online sessions. And in your practice sessions, you know, there's a checkbox that said, hey, do you want other cars out there or not? And if there's other cars, it gives you a chance. Like, for example, last night I jumped in at a last minute's notice into that into that race because... I convinced myself I needed to have a race in before we did the show. Now, I was still a little nervous about it because <clears throat> I hadn't practiced and I didn't want to mess up. Like, that's always the thing. I don't want to mess up in somebody else's race by my incompetence or making a, making a mistake. But if you're going into racing against uh, computer-controlled cars, you're not going to have that same fear because who cares? So you're going to have the ability to go out there and practice with cars but without that fear of being yelled at, you know, and being called out because, I mean, yes, it is, you know, it's a hobby, but people take it seriously and people get mad when, you know, things go wrong, you know, especially if it's something that they've been uh, out there doing, you know, <clears throat> practicing for a race and all of a sudden, you know, some jerk comes in and takes a corner too sharp and wipes them out. They get mad and you'll hear about it. But, you know, so if you gave the opportunity to get more comfortable driving around cars, even if they're not driving exactly like human cars, you know, but, you know, a chance to race those courses with that car around other cars and not have that fear of a mistake and, you know, kind of to use that as a learning tool is what I was thinking. And then, you know, and then to tie into that, what if, you know, there's a lot of series that go off that have a hard time going official. People want to race this particular car. Um, like we mentioned, we talked about the sprint car and uh, the silver crown, you know, as an example, and the Lotus sometimes has, you know, well, a lot of times has problems. Um, people want to race that car in a race environment, but they can't. So what if, you know, you had the opportunity to, this race isn't going to go official. Hey, we'll throw in some AI cars if you just want to do it anyway, type thing, you know, is to, in order yeah. to give them an opportunity to just race. Maybe, you know, they make it non-official still, but give you a chance to at least experience some of those great cars that just don't have that participation behind them, you know, around other cars, even if it's not the same level of challenge. So I counter with that, sir. <laughs> and here's my counter. Your first point about kind of treating it like a practice mode, you would have to take it pretty seriously, in my opinion, because especially if you were someone that was kind of new and, and you were still trying to learn, um, you could develop bad habits because you're not getting the same reaction from that AI car, not the person, but the car, like the way the car handles or, or might the line it might take or um, the way that it might uh, race you when you're trying to pass it. Um, does it pinch you down? Does it give you a ton of room? Uh, there could be some bad habits, and I don't know exactly like what to pinpoint to help argue, but that could be developed that could bite you when you're racing against a real person. Right. Um, and that that concerns me. But I do kind of agree that you could use it as a practice. 
Um, because, it, and I think it would help people, uh, especially like brand new people, get out on the racetrack <clears throat> and get in a room full of cars, you know, make a full field of cars, not have to worry about being yelled at to where they would get discouraged and then leave iRacing because believe me, and I'm looking in the camera when I say this, I know a lot of people who have been yelled at when they first started on iRacing and they left. That's wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, like, well, <clears throat> nobody needs, I mean, we, we come to this for escapism. I mean, yes, we take it seriously. Yes, we try to be better. Yes, we try to be as successful as we can in it, but it's still a form of escapism. So, yeah. hey, you know what? I can get yelled at in real life. I don't need to get yelled at on my computer. <laughs> and you don't know what that person's been through. Um, one of the best examples that I ever heard, um, and somebody posted this in the forums, and I thought it was so perfect. Uh, for an example of why we should not yell. I mean, I know we get frustrated. Don't get me wrong. I get frustrated. You guys have watched my streams. But why we should not yell <clears throat> at somebody else is you don't know what they're going through. What if that person that accidentally wrecked you into the turn was just on iRacing to escape from a rough week because somebody that they loved had just passed away? I mean, you don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just on iRacing to get away from it. And then you yell at them and cuss them out and, and use all these words. And, and I'm not saying you as in you guys that listen to the show. I'm just Yeah, because we general. know you guys are awesome. And we've pretty yeah. much proven that you guys are like the cream of the crop. So, yeah. And so th that bothers me. But that's a separate point. We don't need to talk about that. But um, it, it just would concern me that if you, if you didn't, like if you just got on the practice and you kind of just bumper card your way through there and, and you kind of did things, to me it, it would you would get some bad habits out of it and you wouldn't learn racecraft and racecraft is probably one of the biggest things that not very many people talk about um, when it comes to iRacing you mm -hmm. have to have pretty good racecraft um, this is this is not Gran Turismo where you just kinda die bombing in the corner and oh my bad dude not really and keep going you know, you, you have to have really good racecraft. And a lot of these races are long races. You have to have racecraft for those long races. You can't just do 20 lap sprints and be done with it. You've got to have strategy and everything. There's, there's so many things that could potentially become a bad habit if you used it like a practice session. Um, now, your second point, <clears throat> which I am trying to remember totally. Which um, filling out filling out series that can't get official races yes. going. That I actually think is a pretty good idea um, because there have been times where you know a, a race doesn't go official and you're you're all kind of like geared up and ready to go and and then it doesn't go official and so then you almost kind of have that thought in your mind like well what do I do now and if you had the option to jump in there uh, because obviously for those of you that don't know if a race doesn't go official you can still join it and still participate in the race and you will still get credited with safety rating um, but you won't get points or I rating, I rating or any yeah. that stuff. And you won't get the win either if you happen to win the race. Um, your stats, basically, in general, won't count. But you could get safety ratings, so you could go into the room and kind of plan your strategy for the race. Um, obviously, it would differ with cautions and stuff, but you could still kind of plan a strategy and, and learn how the tire fall-off is and, and different things like that while having cars to race instead of almost treating it like a time trial. Right. I do think that would be a good idea. Um, but yeah, I those are kind of my main points of why I don't like AI. I could probably name more, but I'm not going to. Um, the one thing that I will say that I would love about having AI would be only in a test session or the offline testing mode that iRacing has or in a hosted room, the option to have it in a hosted room, <clears throat> and the reason why I would like it is to just simply goof off with. Hmm. Because iRacing is so serious and is a simulation, and we're constantly, when we go on go, go into these races, we're always, you know, like in focus mode and trying to be serious, and there's never, at least I feel like, there's never any room to just goof off and laugh and, and have fun. 
And if you were able to create your own offline testing room, like I'll just make up an example, I could join the cup car at Bristol, put 43 cars on the track, or 42 and then me, and just go out there, start in the back, and then just race. You know, to me that would just be fun to do for an hour on the occasion. It would also be fun to get like me and you and uh, our teammates and Greg, you know, and just jump into the room, a hosted room, make it private, add in however many um, AI cars, and just kind of goof off and just, you know, we could wreck them if we wanted to, we could take it seriously and try to race. And, but the main point is just goof off. That would be like the only thing that I would be really okay with, with AI. Otherwise, I don't think we need it on everything. Okay, fair enough. I think that's a, it was, this concludes our debate. And it was a matter of, we wanted to discuss the topic and it's, it's more fun to have point counterpoint or different pointing, uh, points of view. Now, all of that being said, and I do, and all my points that I brought up are stuff that I think is valid. Now, should I, do I think that they should implement AI into it? Well, no, I don't, because it's that's not what the sim's about. Um, I, I think it would be, if it was, if it was something that could be implemented solely, like Chad said, as an offline tool, and it didn't take away from things in development, I'd be cool with it. Um, it's a suggestion, like like I said, one of those things would be to go out there and race and not worry about repercussions, uh, racing around traffic. Well, what I suggest, and I think that's a great idea, and what I suggest you do is you go into uh, ghost mode, uh, where you can actually join as a spectator into a session, and then you can actually drive in the car, but none of the none of the guys can see you. You cannot collide with them. That's a great way to go out there and pretend, like you're racing yeah. in a real race. You're not going to collide with them. You're going to go out there and you're going to make sure that, you know, you get used to racing around cars without any fear of reprisal and no consequence. Like that's a great way to, learn. to do that, uh, to go there and take that step. Um, I would love to see, um, you know, now that we're now that we're done the debating part, I, I think it would be cool if they, because of what they've built with iRacing, uh, because of the the physics, the tracks, the cars, everything that they put into this over this, well, I was going to say six years, but, well, obviously they were developing it long before that, um, may, maybe make a sister company that didn't affect the actual iRacing, like a, a, a sister venture where these guys are going to take that technology, that what they have, and make a more gamey type thing and have it as a separate product. You know, use what you've learned over here and if the business model supports it, make something different over there. Um, you know, and and make it make a game. You know, with, because there's the assets of iRacing are already there. You know, what I mean, like use what you've already built, and just build a game. You know, like I think that would be cool. I'd love to see them take all this stuff, everything that they have in there, and make you know a NASCAR the game that doesn't suck. <laughs> Because, I mean, you know, I, I enjoy playing games that have a career progression, that have uh, something that you could do from a, uh, like, that has objectives and stuff like that. Like, I picked up one of the first NASCAR of the games because I want that sort of experience. I've played F1, uh, that you know, the F1 series that Codemasters makes, because I like that, I like that style of game. It's not, the racing isn't as good, obviously, as the AI racing stuff, but I like that fun factor yeah. you know so i mean if they could take what they learned of what they have and make a game that's fun i think that would be great as long as it was a separate venture and didn't take away from like you were saying like that's the main thing it, if they take time to build it it's not worth it yeah. you know if it takes away from hey all of a sudden well we were going to build this feature now we can't oh well but here's some cars that are idiots yeah <laughs> You know, that's that's not a good investment in time. <laughs> but uh, I am glad that you brought up ghost racing because that is so underused. And people in our chat are talking about that. I mean, it, it's I it's such a great tool. I mean, yeah, you're invisible. You can't make contact with other cars. And that's a little weird. Uh, you know, I mean, trust me, it is. It's weird to have oh, yeah. a car drive through you suddenly. Man, I, I've, done, I, I've done that. And I'm still, 
Like, yeah. until the moment that car goes through me, I'm still thinking, what if the game glitches? What if he hits me? What if he hits me? What if he hits me? <laughs> <laughs> what if we suddenly end up inside of each other? Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's... If you ignore that part of it, you ignore, you know, somebody driving through you or you driving through the crash, you know, without getting in damage or whatever, um, it you can really learn a lot. You can learn people's racing lines. I mean, you, mm-hmm. one of the things that I used to do, um, and I'll be short about this, is is if there was like a track that I was struggling with, like Stafford Motor Speedway or whatever they call it now, um, for some reason, when I first started driving there in the on super late model, I would... I was struggling. I, I couldn't. I had the line fairly well, but I couldn't get the speed right. Um, and when I this ghost feature kind of came in, I actually went in and uh, watched. I don't even know who it was, but they were really good at the late model at that track. And I jumped into that ghost mode and followed them. Like I timed it to where I came out of the pits and got up to speed, and I was right behind them. Right. And I just started following them, and that's how I learned. Uh, and ever since then, I've been pretty good at Stafford. And so, I mean, that is really a feature that, in my opinion, takes the place of AI that we should use. Yep. Um, more, well, at least the people that really want to use it and, and need to use it if they're struggling at a track or whatever should use it. Um, I mean, obviously, a guy like Ray Alfala probably doesn't need to use it, but maybe there's a track he could use it on. Um so yeah, I mean, I great. I'm glad you brought that up too because that uh, seriously, everybody needs to start using that, uh, and not because everybody sucks, but it, because it's such a great tool to use. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely, and that's the thing. There's a lot of <laughs> iRacing is great at bringing out new features and then forgetting that they brought out new features and not bringing it to the limelight. <laughs> like it's 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 one of those. Um... Yeah, I mean, they, there's so much in there that you know somebody coming into the into the game, and and I say game, not this game. I mean, like like jumping into the game, you know, like you're you know you're getting into it, man. Uh, you know, late, you're not gonna have a clue about half the stuff that's in there. I mean, yeah. because you know it's evolved so much. I mean, like I said, I mean, I was there since beta. You know, it, it's I've been here since the beginning of this thing, and holy crap, you wouldn't even recognize it from what what was there back then. To what what we have available now, like it's just amazing. I mean, heck, I mean, yeah. what was I'm, I'm thinking of all the all the things that we take for granted now. Uh, we should do a show on that one of these days. We should take a look spotter. at spotter, spotter. Yeah, like yeah, you didn't even have a bloody spotter. You yeah. know, in, in the first thing, you know. It's, There's uh, so many things. That yeah, it's crazy. We, we, yeah, we do, should do that. Yeah, what are the, we'll do a show in the future. We'll just kind of look back at what was available at launch and what's available now, and just. Just to kind of give you guys some perspective, because man, it's and and know. when we say spotter, we don't mean the spotter feature where a live person can come in. We mean the computer spotter. Yeah, no, no, you yeah, you went out there on the track and you were on your own. If you didn't see him in your yeah. mirrors, you know, good luck to you, sir. <laughs> you know, <Yep. laughs> and those those are road races. It's not as you know, I mean, obviously, it's still important, but it's not as important as oval racing. Oval racing, a spotter is critical i mean really yeah you know you know especially yeah, if somebody who doesn't was... have triple monitors you know who can actually see what's going on beside them you know i just got one monitor in the front of me and you know my uh, uh, a uh, listener of the show and uh, somebody who watched one of my uh, my uh, videos uh, comment that my fov was like way off um and yes, wonders how i is. can see, wonders how i can see anything so uh, maybe i'll have to run through that tool because but you know that's another thing field of view is a lot of people don't use it, but man, it's such a great tool, and it's not that hard to use. Um, but we'll discuss that another day. Yes. So uh, I thought that was really great. Uh, my favorite line—you've already mentioned it—that Tyler had in his posts, um, and I think this is this should be the quote for iRacing. racing. Um, he says uh, the Gran Turismo markets as the real driving simulator, which is true. It is a driving simulator. Um, but then he says, I want iRacing to market as the real racing simulator. And I think that is a perfect quote um, to kind of tell you what Gran Turismo is and tells you what iRacing is. Absolutely. So, like I said, I, I, I believe I, there was truth behind all the points I made. But like I said, I, I don't think they should do it either. <laughs> unless unless in, the, in the case where, you know, 
situations where I mentioned, you know. Yeah. But, and yeah, that ghost feature, like, just use that. I mean, because that will, that is a awesome tool to to learn tracks, to mm -hmm. learn lines, to, like I said, get you. All you have to do is in your brain say those cars are real, and it'll get you used to racing around cars. You know, like don't go say, well, they're just ghosts, so I can just drive through them. Just like, just don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a simple switch inside your head. Say, you know what? I can't hit that car because he's there, you know, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, so I think, Mr. Chad, we've uh, gone on long enough, and uh, we should uh, let these wonderful people go. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, you know, we had we had a week off, and then I was going to say I think last week was shorter, but I think it was supposed to be, but it, it didn't end up being as typical of us. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Shocker alert. <laughs> I know. That's that's how we roll, man. Rabbit holes are plenty. But uh, But I haven't I, had uh, anybody complain that we go too long, so No, that's um Yeah. Well, I mean we have, we have a great audience. They don't complain much. And even when they complain it's suggestions and not complaints. There's a big difference. <laughs> yeah. Uh but that will about do it for this week. A uh, big thanks to all of you out there for listening, and a big shout-out to our chat room today. Like, this is the most active chat room we've had since we've been doing the shows live, so uh, thank you very much for coming out and, uh, and participating in a very... Uh, you guys are the real MVP. <laughs> a very professional and, uh, and interactive manner. It was, uh, it was great. Like, we love, we love interacting with you guys through Twitter, email, and stuff like that, and having you guys just in there the chat was great tonight. So thank you very much for coming up. See interaction created a debate i know see user suggestion see you know i would have missed that thread because you know it was active for a while and then yep. it, you know f fell off the page so i never so, look at the form so i was no help i do <laughs> so uh thanks to tyler for suggesting that and uh, you guys out there make sure you uh, if there's anything you think we should talk about or debate or whatever uh let us know and let us know if you like that segment uh, if, as a way of presenting something because uh, remember i I'll talk about anything. I'll uh, I'll debate what I, even if I don't believe it, I'll debate it, and then I'll tell you what I really think. <laughs> uh, remember the so show. Is... You think the grass is green? Well, uh, guess what? I well, it's not. It's not. Or, or right now, it's white. I'll tell you that much. Well, yeah. <laughs> and some parts is brown. <laughs> remember the show is available for download on iTunes and Zoom under the podcast section, where we would really appreciate. If you'd give us a review to help us get the word out, if you haven't already done so. Uh, the show is also available on YouTube and Twitch at Ratface Productions. That's me and mirrored over at White Knight Productions with Mr. Chad. Uh, you can check out the website for information, archives, links, and the polls we mentioned. We didn't mention the poll. Uh, the poll will be ending there in a couple days, so if you haven't gone over and voted... Oh, crap, I haven't gone over and voted yet. <laughs> if you haven't gone over Listen and voted to your yet... your own advice. <laughs> If you haven't gone over and voted yet, like myself, uh, make sure you do that because uh, that poll will be closing at the end of the month and we'll be discussing it on the next show. Um, so you can find that poll over at our website, which is over at iracingtodayradio.com. You can like the show on Facebook if you like that sort of thing by searching for well, the iRacing Today Radio Show on Facebook. Seems logical. And you can follow us on Twitter, and that would be at iRacingToday for myself. And uh, uh, at it's Chad like for Mr. Chad. And before you get into your speech, there's something else I forgot to mention. And because, see, you're next, so I figured I'd break in now. Uh, the um, people who have uh, followed me um, through all my podcasting, and I've been podcasting forever in various mediums, uh, know that my very first podcast experience was with a, a show called Nobody's Listening. Uh, and uh, that's where I first got my uh, my start in podcasting, uh, co-hosting with. For the record, I mm -hmm. think is a clever title. It was, but then he started to hate it because then he thought because he was being funny, and then he was like, "Oh wait, does uh, that make my show look bad?" <laughs> yeah, he he didn't like it eventually. Um, so I, I hosted a show with um, uh, initially James uh, James Kinnison uh, over there, and uh, then eventually with uh, John uh, Stein, Steinklobber as well. Anyway, uh, it's a clean comedy podcast where you tell funny life stories. That's where I got my start years and years and years ago doing that uh, show with James. Uh, he The show went away for a while, then it came back, then it went away. Uh, it's back now in a new uh, in in incarnation? No, no, that's not the right word. A new form. Uh, it's now called That Story Show. 
Um, and you can find all the information about that over at nlcast.com, which is where he has all his podcasts and whatnot. And I say all that to say this, uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, we haven't uh, nailed down a time yet, but I'm actually going to do a guest spot over on that show, kind of a throwback to old times. I'm going to go over there and do the show with, um, with James and John, uh, just uh, for old time's sake. Uh, kind of, a, we've been talking again over the last little bit, and it's like, you know what? I think it'd be great to come over, and uh, he kind of asked around and thought about it, and apparently a lot of the old uh, fans of the show are still around, so they said, yeah, you got to bring that guy back, the crazy Canadian, because they're both down in the States, so uh, I'll uh, let you guys know on Twitter and on the show and whatnot when that'll happen, uh, but uh, just want to make sure that you guys knew that I'll be doing that sometime in the future, so you can uh, listen to me on another show that has nothing to do with iRacing, although I'll probably mention the show a bunch while I'm on it, to plug it. <laughs> so... And I'll have another podcast that I'll be on. I'll just be on this one. Hey man, I'm I'm a I'm a media celebrity, man. I'm man, I've been podcasting forever on so many podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So sorry to interrupt, but I want I forgot all about that and then it's like oh you no, didn't I interrupt. Stop I hadn't started yet. <laughs> Why well, I, I had to interrupt before you had a chance to start talking. <laughs> uh so <clears throat> on that note, that is cool. I'll have to look out for that. Um I want to read my part. Uh, please email any questions, comments, and poll suggestions that you may have and send in great debates, topics mm -hmm. uh, that you may have as well. Uh, you can send those to feedback at iracingtodayradio.com. Or, of course, you can tweet us if it's short enough. Yep. Um, and, of course, feel free to add myself uh, and Trevor as friends on the iracing.com members' website. He's Trevor Cameron. I'm Chad Dalton. No numbers after our name. Um, the originals. <laughs> yeah. And only. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, you feel free to do that. Um, I still have more friends Trevor. Yay! Um, I, have more, I have more Twitter followers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but which one is more important? Um, do you mean you or me or, or the Twitter or the, the racing? I, I, I both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I was just going to try to trigger a debate. But anyways, <laughs> um, please, either uh, if you're not uh, on iRacing and you're thinking about joining on um, one of those special deals we talked about. I was going to say, now's a great time to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's always a great time, but now is especially a great time. Uh, when you do so, please refer Trevor or I uh, in the referral box. We beg of you. Um, not really. But you can enter uh, Trevor's email, which is ratface with two Ts at gmail.com. Okay. And when I say that, it is not ratface with two T's uh, as the email address. It is All R -A -T -T, one word. <laughs> yeah, R-A-T-T-F-A-C-E um, at gmail.com. Just want to clarify that just in case you were like, ratface at with two T's at gmail.com. <laughs> um, but, uh, or you can add uh, my email, which is iracinglegend at gmail.com. See, you should you should just do me because I mine is actually has something to do with iRacing. Well, I, I, and I, I actually, I spent a lot actually, of money. I just say, I, I spent actually, a lot of my credits on the the <laughs> subscription. Have like I have an, the email address iracingtoday at gmail dot com is me as well, but that's not what I signed up because I obviously didn't know I was going to be doing this podcast when I signed up to the iRacing yes. for the first time. So I wonder if there's a way to change that, or am I just too lazy to find out? Hmm, hard to say. You could probably con. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can change your email. I saw it in the my account tab yesterday. Oh. Maybe I'll look so they, into that. <laughs> yeah, look into that. Maybe next week we'll have a new email address. <laughs> but until that time, ladies and gentlemen, remember that the race is rarely won in the first turn. But it is often lost there. Good night, everybody.